Hey guys, Sam Gupta here, founder at 10x for the kids and an official Guinness record holder for the youngest computer programmer in the world. And today, you are gonna be learning the chapter 6 of your book trackpad class 7, right? That is introduction to mobile apps. That is on your page number 81 and we'll start with page number 82 as we have a basic conversation on page number 81. Alright. So we know that mobile computing is that boom and everyone is looking for innovative ideas to expand their businesses from rapidly growing technology, right? Everybody is there to make profit through their applications. Mobile apps have never been more popular, right? We are in a technological phase where everything is done from mobile phones, from entertainment, banking and education to connecting to different parts of the world. In this chapter, we will learn about the apps and their categories, right? Alright, so what are apps? So apps or applications are software that run on mobile phones, right? So they are software that run on mobile phones, computers, tablets, etc. They are designed to perform a specific task or function to make users more productive and assist them with personal tasks, right? So there are many app development software available on the internet. Some of them are free and paid, which offer us a platform for mobile app development, right? So you can develop your own mobile apps through um, softwares that are there in on the internet, right? Now, next, we are gonna see about iOS and Android. So most uh, smartphones run on iOS or Android. If you would, uh, if you would have seen, if you are using an iPhone, the, whenever there's an update, it says iOS three point something something. Just a random example. And um, if you are using Android, there in the update uh, or in the so about uh, section of your settings, you must have seen that um, the i operating system is Android, right? So what does the operating system means, right? So you have a mobile phone, right? But you need it should not be completely blank, right? You don't you don't buy a mobile phone for a black screen, right? You need it to work. And how will it work through the operating system? How how you will be able to install apps, work with apps, um, play games and all that is through the operating system. So you have two operating system, main operating systems basically, that is iOS and Android. So iOS is an operating system developed by Apple and is used on iPhones and iPads only, right? Whereas Android is also a type of operating system developed by Google. Right, and it is used on smartphones and tablets, right? Mostly Android smartphones and tablets. Alright, so next we are on features of mobile apps. Mobile phones give us a freedom to communicate anywhere and anytime. They are used widely in our day-to-day -day lives, equipped with features like MP3 player, high resolution cameras, high sound quality, 5G technology, internet surfing, etc. There are many, many more features in today's iPhones iPhones or normal phones also, right? You see the 14 Pro Max, it has a high resolution camera, it has high sound quality, 5G technology, internet surfing, MP3 player, it has everything, right? It, ha it has even more uh, features, right? There are thousands of apps designed to run on smartphones and tablets to perform specific tasks. Some of the important features of apps are that they need to be user friendly, right? So uh, basically they should be responsive and whenever resized or changed orientation is there, then uh, it should be user friendly. It should work according to us, right? How we want it to work. It should be easy to design, right? So uh, it should not be more much complicated to design, right? It should have an easy design, right? A simplistic design. Right, it should be interactive, meaning that it should have buttons, it should have text input fields, it should have multiple input uh, input uh, elements. Right, uh, that means uh, that it is interactive, and it should be easy to understand. It should be easy to navigate between pages. Right, and it should not be complicated. There should not be much nesting. Right, nesting should only be there uh, when required. Right. So now we are on types of mobile apps on your page number 82 only. So mobile apps are divided into three types, native apps, web apps, and hybrid apps. Let's learn about them in detail. So first we are on native apps. So apps that are developed for a specific platform, operating system, and device are called native apps. A native app developed for iOS 
would not be able to work for Android and app developed for Android or Windows won't work on iOS systems, right? So native apps are those apps developed for one specific operating system. Like some applications are only there for iOS, other applications are only there for Android. These apps can be installed from the app stores such as Google Play or Apple App Store. The majority of the apps installed on our smartphones are native apps. They have access to cameras, microphones, compass, etc. Users can also use some apps offline without an internet connection. Some examples of native apps are Angry Bird, Dinner Spinner, etc. Right? Pretty cool. You have all installed native apps. You have all played a uh, one time Call of Duty, Fortnite, or PUBG also, maybe. Right? And now it's banned in India. <laughs> We have web apps now. So web apps are actually web applications that give a user an experience similar to native apps. <coughs> so they are similar to native app, but they are not exactly the same. These apps cannot be installed via the Play Store app or App Store, right? You can't install them in the, inside your phone. These are de deployed on the web server. Hence, you need an extra app called a browser to access these apps on your mobile device. Like you, if you go on Safari, that is your browser for Apple, you have Chrome main browser for Android. So whenever you go on the browser, you can uh, Google search, you can go on YouTube, you have many uh, web addresses you can go to, right? Similarly, you can make, create your own web apps, right? And navigate to that page. So you also need an internet connection to work with the web apps. So an internet connection is mandatory to work with web, web apps, right? That's important, right? So these apps are generally developed in HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery, right? So this is uh, basic applications are developed on HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery. And there are many, many other languages used to create web apps. Web apps are different from websites. The major difference is that a web, a web app can be a small part of a website that provides particular functionality. On the other hand, a website can contain many web apps. Some examples of web apps are OLX, Flipkart, Amazon, and Pinterest, right? So this difference is important for you to learn. A website is where multiple <coughs> things are offered for you to do. And then web app is, one, uh, is used for one specific thing. Right, you used to do one specific thing like Pinterest is used to navigate through images, Amazon is there to order stuff, Flipkart is there to order stuff, OLX is there to book a cap. All right, next you have hybrid apps. Right, so hybrid apps are apps that are combination of both native and web apps. Similar the native, similar to the native app, a hybrid app is developed from a specific platform and deployed on the app store. You need to install the hybrid app before using it on your mobile. These apps are also developed in software like HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, etc. So, uh, talking about hybrid apps, hybrid apps, it's saying that uh, which uh, which can run on the web also and which can be installed also, right? Developers use development tools to package the code of the hybrid app with a browser to make it a native app. In this way, hybrid apps become cross-platform, which means the same code can be done on multiple platforms. This technique saves the development time and cost also. Hence, these apps are more popular than native and web apps. Some of example of hybrid apps are Instagram, Gmail, and Twitter. So these are, this is saying that uh, your hybrid apps can run on every platform, Android, iOS, or any other operating system with no issues. That's why these apps are much more popular than uh, web apps and native apps. Right, so now let's move on to your page number 84, right? And we wanna see categories of apps. There are a lot of categories and subcategories of available apps on the Play Store and Apple App Store. These stores can con contain different types of apps which are further categorized into various categories. Currently, there are 32 app categories in Google Play Store and 24 in the Apple App Store, right? First, now we wanna see some uh, important categories. Uh, first category is the educational apps, right? So educational apps are specifically designed for children to make the teaching learning process more interactive. Children can learn in a play, in a play way uh, method by playing education educational game apps. 
Educational apps are also helpful for teachers to organize the classes and various tools required to teach students. Examples of educational apps are Weather Channel, PhotoMath, BuzzFeed, Flipboard, Duolingo, SoloLearn, etc. So these apps, it's talking about these apps where you can play, right? You can play and learn. Next, we have lifestyle apps. So lifestyle apps are subcategorized into fitness, food, travel, uh, food, travel, health, and leisure, etc. They make your travel easier, more comfortable, and fun without getting too worried about what you are going to eat while on travel. You can even book a table at your favorite restaurant. These apps also track your fitness and give suggestions to improve your lifestyle. Examples of lifestyle apps are Google Maps, Make My Trip. Make My Trip, uh, trip is for your vacations and all. Uh, Uber uh, from uh, to go from going to one place to other another. Uh, to go from one place to another. And uh, Google Earth we have right. Uh, where you can see everything right the whole world map and all and we have Ola that is also used for going from one place to another right next we have social media apps social media apps the medium to connect with the people inside or outside the social circle to share similar personal or professional interest you can keep track of what is going on in the lives of a family and friends through social social media apps we can share live videos post images and start conversations using these apps. Example of social media apps are Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, Twitter, etc. Right? So Google Plus is not so popular, but Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook are very, very popular social media apps. Next, we have utility apps. These apps are also known as productivity apps. They help us to complete the tasks like organizing our day-to-day -day tasks. They provide us tools to perform various tasks like calculating numbers, scanning pages, sharing files, etc. Examples of productivity apps are calculator, square register, etc. Right? So, uh, mainly, mainly, uh, you have all heard of educational apps. You all know what uh, lifestyle apps are. Uh, so you all know what social media apps are, obviously. <laughs> and you all know what utility apps are, like calculator and all you already have on your iPhone. Right? And you all know what entertainment apps are, but I'll still read. You all know what gaming apps are. You, all, uh, you use these every day for two hours, three hours, if I'm not wrong. Then we have con communication apps and e-commerce apps. All right. So entertainment apps. These apps are designed to entertain users and uh, their main focus is to keep users busy. They are helpful to fill our time and keep users engaged. Examples of entertainment apps are Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Podcast, YouTube, Kindle, etc. It, indirectly, it said that entertainment apps are time-based apps and it, it gave the examples, right? That's pretty true. Gaming apps. These apps are sh uh, uh, share uh, apps shared more than twenty four percent area of the app store. So twenty four percent of the apps on the app store are gaming apps only. They help you help the users improve their cognitive skills and focus if used correctly within a time constraint. Examples of gaming apps are Service Surfer. That's out of date. Sudoku. That's a educational type of game, trivia crack, etc. It didn't name apps like Call of Duty, PUBG, and all that these days you guys play, right? Next, we have communication apps. Communication apps allows us to communicate with each other by sending and receiving messages, information, and opinion in the form of text, videos, and audio. Note that social media apps and communication apps are different. Communication are apps are used for communication, right? One to one or a group communication. Social media apps are used to create new connections, right? You can connect with new people who have similar interests, right? All right, so let's continue. These apps also allow us to see the face of the person to whom we are talking. Example of communication apps are Skype, Hike, and FaceTime. E-commerce apps, you all must have ordered something for your moms, dads or something through e-commerce apps. E-commerce means buying or selling products on online services over the internet. 
e-commerce apps allows us to buy or sell products while sitting at home or any other place. Examples of e-commerce apps are Amazon, Flipkart, Paytm, Grofers, etc. You all must have or ordered something or the other through e-commerce apps. And through this, we are on the end of our chapter. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with as many people as you can. Thank you guys. Bye. Stay safe, stay healthy and keep watching my videos.